Hello and welcome to jQuery for Designers. My name is Remy Sharp and in this episode we'll be revisiting the, uh, the jQuery spy that I did at the end of December. And what we'll do is we'll add some Ajax functionality to it. So instead of looping around a predefined list of elements, it will go off to our server, make a request, the server will spit back the HTML and we will go round one at a time introducing these new list items to the uh, to our spy element. So this is the original simple spy. I've stuck it in a new file up here. And what this is doing is it's just uh, going through it's it's cached the original list of uh, li elements and it's just looping around each one of them and, and introducing a new one at the top and fading out the bottom one. So over in my code, this is exactly the same as a simple spy, or it is the simple spy. I've upgraded jQuery to three point, sorry, one point three point one, and I've also reduced the number of um, initial li elements. Um, I need one more than we show initially. Um, because of the startup code, otherwise it, it, it kind of conks out here. But I'll, after we've made it um, an Ajax version, we, we may not need five. We could just start off with, with four, which is the number we're showing uh, to start off with, which is here. So on my server side, I've created this, this little script. Um, I've hard-coded the data in here and um, just hard-coded the names and the images and, and bits of data. And at the bottom, I'm just randomizing the array and then looping around five of them and printing out the LIs. So if I show you what this looks like, uh, helper, you'll see it's just a raw HTML and just spitting it out. I don't know what this image is. They're all the same. Apparently so. That loop looks right to me. Oh, I've hard coded the image right. Okay, so I obviously haven't finished. Um, let's just stick the correct image in there. And this is just uh, shorthand PHP. Um, but it's unlikely you'll just have this hard coded list of arrays. You'll probably have some kind of database hit going on in the background, grabbing all the new items and, and you know, dumping them into it, it, out onto the page. Right, let's have a quick look at that again. Yeah, that's a bit better. So what we're going to do is we're going to upgrade the simple spy to to make the Ajax hits. So what uh, what I need to do the, the process changes because here it's caching all the li elements, and what we'll do is we'll Every time the spy function is called, instead of pulling up our cached item, we're going to get it from um, like a, a little hidden repository. So the first step is to loop around. Um, sorry, the first step is to do an AJAX hit. Grab these five um, these five LIs. Okay. I'll show you the source of this so you can see it. So these are just LIs. And put them into a hidden list. And then within the loop that shows the uh, the new spy item, we'll pull it out of that hidden list and remove it. And then once that, once the hidden list goes down to one, we'll do another Ajax hit to refill it again. So it's a pretty straightforward job to convert this to... to making Ajax hits. 
So the first thing I want to do is do the uh, get spy item. So I'm going to create a function at the top here. And I'm going to give it a, um, a source. So I'm going to create a hidden UL on this page. And this will be where I'm storing the, uh, the, the Ajax requested items. So items equals uh, source dot find li and I want to say if items dot length so if there's only one left do an Ajax hit to get some more um, if there's none which there probably shouldn't ever be but if there is handle that as well we'll return false here and otherwise we need to grab the first item and remove it from the list so var dot item equals items dot filter first dot remove in fact, we can just return that straight out. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's correct. So, what will happen here is this source of uh, this this element, the the UL, it will reduce one by one, popping the first one off the the top of the list. So, instead of getting our spy item from this cache that we built up earlier here we're going to get it from this function. So, item equals, I'm just passing in this source thing, so let's put a to-do so that we remember to make that. Okay, and just as a placeholder, I'm going to do if dollar item is not equal to false, and I'm going to move all this code into that if statement. So I'm leaving the set timeout, so it still loops round in a circle. So it will still come back to this the spy function, try and get an item, and if if we actually have one, it will then insert it. So let's create this, this source element um, I want to give it a unique ID, no, do I? No I don't, no, no I don't I'll hide it straight away and then append it to the body and that's it uh, I'm just going to run that and see what it what it does for us. Yes, yeah, so there's our hidden UL, and because we've captured it in a variable, we can reference it with within this particular uh, uh, this particular spy. So, next step is we don't need the cache, so let's get rid of that. Uh, we don't need the total because we're not looping around. Um, a specific length, so we get rid of total, and I'm going to get rid of that variable, and the items variable, and the current item variable, because we don't need that either. So let's get rid of that code as well. Okay, um, let's just pause off this for a second, and um, this where we've collected our spied item and it's not equal to false we want to set the CSS and treat that as the the, the, the element that will be inserted so we don't have to change any of this code here um, and then right, see, let's, have, let's see how this runs is it doing anything? no why isn't it doing anything? I don't think it's ready to do anything. Have we got any errors? No. 
Right, so we have four items here. Oh yeah, of course, item is, is blank. So item's false. Right, so we need to go and the first thing we want to do is take these these LIs that are greater than our limit and instead of removing them completely, we actually want to stick them in this source. So I'm going to do append to dollar source. Okay. So source should have one item in it. When this runs, we should get one going in. There you go. So that's the first one. And then it hasn't got any more. So all we need to do here is add in our Ajax hit. And I I literally just need to do source.load and then put my URL. So that was um, Ajax spy helper PHP. Okay, so in Firebug you can see the Ajax hit that's happening and you can see these um, these allies that I was doing a console.log on. And if you remember the PHP only has returns five items so we should get a fifth item here and it will do an Ajax hit. Yes, there you go. And if you look at the um, the HTML what you can see going on here is this is our hidden kind of container where we we store the results of the Ajax hit so that we don't grab the, the Ajax hit and just dump them all straight into this UL. We kind of store them there as like a bucket and we pick up one at a time. And then once it gets down to, to having just one item left, it does the Ajax hit again and plugs them all in. So if you see when it gets down to, it'll get down to one now. It's grabbing this element and then doing an Ajax hit and stuffing them all back in again. So that's literally as simple as it is to Ajaxify um, our spy. One other thing that was asked on the, the jQuery for Designers blog was how can we get it to stop or pause at least. So it's pretty straightforward. We're going to add a variable called running. Set it as true. Oops, true. And in here, if running, then do all this code. Again, I leave the set timeout so it keeps looping around, so it keeps on hitting this this spy function, and then running this code. If this is equal to false, then it won't execute this code. And we're going to use the um, the bind. Uh, we're going to create a custom event called stop and start in the bind stop and start and we're just going to set running to false okay so if I show you that now it doesn't change the code at all but if I uh, show you in firebug ul dot trigger stop yeah the Ajax has stopped well the, the whole spy has stopped running start because it's setting this running to true and false pretty straightforward how do we get it so that we mouse over where we initialize our plugin I'm going to do bind mouse enter and bind mouse leave and then just this dot trigger stop and the opposite for when we come out so let's just refresh that our mouse comes in whole thing stops mouse goes out uh, yeah well, there we go and off it goes again. Um, I also wrote uh, quite a, a almost a couple of years ago um, another spy, uh, very much along the lines of the uh, the actual the, the dig.com spy. 
uh, I think you search for jQuery dig spy. So this is the 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 dig spy that I wrote some time ago. Um, it's it's a, it's got a lot more options compared to uh, this spy, but this kind of shows you the basics of of creating a spy and kind of caching the results so that you don't have to do a hit for every single additional item you want to put in. The point here is that you can you can pull back 20 results and the spy still runs at the same speed, but you're reducing the amount of um of kind of AJAX hit that you're sending to your server. Um, this uh, this spy is it's quite old code, but it does work, um, and it has similar uh, similar functionality. Uh, the only thing it does have over what we've just created is it checks if the if a duplicate is there. So if it if it pulls back exactly the same, uh, like the latest row it pulls back from the AJAX is the same as the one that's currently sitting on the page, then um, it won't it won't pull it in. Um, but uh, yeah, if they have any other questions or have any questions about this uh, this Ajax spy or any suggestions um, or any requests, feel free to drop me a comment on jQuery for designers. All right, thanks a lot for watching.